Thank you, Kevin. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Trinity United Church in beautiful downtown Newmarket on this beautiful Mother's Day. Um, I have one announcement, and then there's a couple of others. Uh, May 26 is Planting Sunday. Uh, so if you would like to join, bring your gardening gloves and implements. Uh, all hands are needed, large and small. Um, and if you would like to make a donation towards the purchase of flowers, you can uh, do so uh, through the collection plate today. If you wanted to just mark it as four flowers, that would be appreciated. Um, or you might be able to see Allison at uh, Fill My Cup later. Ian. Good morning. Um, I'm here for an announcement and then um, a presentation. Uh, the AOTS Golf Tournament and Dinner. So the AOTS Golf Tournament and Dinner um, is scheduled for May 22nd. Um, the rain date for golf would be May 29th, but the dinner at the Crow's Nest would proceed on the 22nd uh, no matter what. And the dinner will be at 7. The first tee off time for golf the Kettle Creek is 4.02, I think, and then uh, two more tee-off times till 4.18. So all are welcome. It's not just uh, open to men anymore. Um, if you're interested, uh, email me, phone me, or I have a table set up down in the gym today and next Sunday. But we do need to know for purposes of reservations. Thanks. Allison, would you please join me? We'd like to do a presentation to Reverend Evelyn for all that she did for Trinity and to help the search team during the long process, long and successful process of uh, finding a minister. Um, so. Hey, Toledo, I just bought flowers yesterday. <laughs> so this is great. <laughs> First of all, the flowers are from the search team. So well, thank, thank you, you, search very team. Very lovely. The only thing we ask is that that bouquet sitting there is looking pretty sad. If Let's we, switch it. If we could switch it for now. Absolutely. And we'll let you take it home later. I'll <laughs> yeah. even leave it for next week. Well, I'm here sure, next week. Sure, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It might need some water. Okay, we'll do a quick. Yeah. Here you go, Hazel. There you go. Wow, doesn't yeah. that look pretty? Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> We're a huggy bunch here. And a second. Thank you. Can you hear me? Go to the mic. Or, yeah. Okay. Uh, the second item is uh, from the congregation and their appreciation. And it's a Trinity anniversary mug for our 200th anniversary. And oh, excellent. You might enjoy one. Oh, wow. Okay, I'll be having lots of tea. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this is lovely. Yeah. Thank you very much. This is very kind. I really appreciate that. Oh, neat mug. I like the base. Mm. <laughs> All right. Wow. As we gather today, we acknowledge the history of the land on which we stand. Throughout the centuries, many peoples have walked this land, including the Wendat, the Haudenosaunee, and the Anishinaabe peoples, whose presence here continues to this day. We are mindful of broken covenants and the need to strive to make right with all our relations. And earlier this year, Trinity voted unanimously to become an affirming ministry, to stand in solidarity with those who have been marginalized and those who advocate for them. We celebrate the gifts that diversity brings. We are committed to being a safe community where each of us can express our authentic selves. Here, we welcome people of all genders, ages, gender identities, sexual orientations, races, abilities, ethnic and cultural backgrounds, and economic circumstances. You belong here exactly as you are. 
And one other quick announcement. Next Sunday is Pentecost, which is the celebration of the birth of the Christian church. Uh, as the disciples had gathered, uh, the Holy Spirit came upon them as tongues of flame, and then a wind took, came through. And so I'm inviting you all to wear the colors of Pentecost next week. So think of the colors of fire. Red, orange, yellow, a color of wind would be blue. So uh, knock yourself out. Come dressed for Pentecost, because we're celebrating next week. <laughs> so there you go. And we have already lit the Christ candle as a reminder that we are never alone. God is indeed with us, and we become the light to shine for others so they may know God's love and grace. Our opening hymn is number 189 in Voices United. But you have the call to worship up. Cool. I guess we'll go with the call to worship. I do hope we have that hymn somewhere. What's in your bulletin? The hymn? Okay, we're going with the hymn, oh, uh, people over there. <laughs> and then we'll go back to the, uh, maybe you don't even have the hymn. Number, okay, so in your pews, take the uh, Burgundy book, nine, fifth, 189. Hail the day that sees him rise, and great hymn for Ascension Sunday, 189. Me. Mm -hmm. 
please be seated. And now we Yay! So please check the screen. <laughs> Today is Ascension Sunday, when we celebrate Christ's return to God. We look up in wonder as he is lifted from us into heaven. But this is not the time to be looking upward. There's work to be done. Jesus has entrusted the ministry of God's love to us. Let's get to work. Let's make our hearts ready for the task ahead with prayer and praise. And I invite us to join our hearts together as we pray. And the prayer will be printed for us. Please pray with me. We love to think of you as a victorious conqueror, Jesus, the one who claims power by force of strength and makes all others bow at his feet. We love to feel that we are in your corner, Jesus, on the winning side, powerful by association and safe from what threatens us because of your strong presence. But then you speak out about gathering all things together, of unity and reconciliation, of love and sharing, of filling all things with yourself. You invite us into a conversation, not a conquest, into dialogue, not dominion, into the power of love, not the love of power. We praise you, Ascended One, for refusing to hoard your power and glory, for refusing to remain aloof and removed from creation, and for including the likes of us in your cosmic community. Amen. God loves us and forgives us. We are no longer numbered with the wicked, but rather are placed with those whom God has blessed. So be a blessing to all whom you meet in God's name. Amen. And I would invite you to greet the people around you with the peace of Christ, saying, may the peace of Christ be with you in responding and also with you. I would invite any children who are here uh, or those who feel, a feel kind of childlike, come on down. I have something I want to share with you this morning. All right. Okay. I have a lot. Wow. Three of you. Woohoo. As my mother would say, the most important people are here. So have a seat. Sit beside uh, Jen if you want. That's okay. So just to remind you, my name's Evelyn. What's yours? Do you remember? Okay. It, we'll keep that a secret. That's all right. Well. Oh, wow. Oh, well, you're going to need some help to know what the, I bet you have no idea what this is. Do you know what that is? No. Does anybody know what this is? 
Okay, does anybody not know what this is? Well, just in case. So, have you ever heard of a baptism? You think you might have? Well, it's kind of unique and wonderful. So, a baptism is when someone wants to know that they are loved by God and welcomed into a church, a faith community, but not just this one, the whole world around. And it's really kind of neat. And so we put water in here, and then, see that little baby right there? You see? Her name's Meadow. Hey, Meadow, how's it going? She's too busy with the godparents. <laughs> and there's water in it, and are you ready for this? I'm going to take the water, and I'm going to put some of it on her head. Holy crow. Isn't that a wild idea? Is that silly? Yet, see, but it isn't silly because we're here worshiping God. And God has a son, and his name is Jesus. And Jesus lived and did a lot of teaching, and he prayed for people, and he told stories, and he sent his followers on a mission. And but Jesus was baptized, so he was a big guy, and his cousin took him, he didn't use a font, this is called a font, fancy word, don't worry about it, it's just the thing where we baptize, but they didn't have that when, in Jesus' day, which was like a really, really long, 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 long ago, instead, he was at a river, and John took him and put him under the water, but he brought him back up, so he's okay. But that water symbolized God's love that washed all over Jesus. And so the water that I'm going to put on Meadow's head, I'm not putting her in here. No, I can't do that. The font's not big enough. And she has a pretty dress on, so I don't want to wreck it. And, but the water is a way for us humans to see God God's love washing over her. And that's what we're celebrating. That meadow is a beautiful and precious child of God, just like you. You are a beautiful and precious child of God. Kate is a beautiful and precious child of God. Alan back there, wave your hand, Alan. <laughs> He's a beautiful and precious child of God. His wife's not here to hear that, but he is. <laughs> so remind her, he's a beautiful and precious. We're all beautiful and precious children of God. And that's what we celebrate today. And so in the part of the, we're going to baptize her shortly, and there's water in a pitcher back there. And at one point, I'm going to ask you and Kate to help pour the water into here. Would you be willing to do that? Excellent. Okay. And then from that water, I'll be baptizing her. Now, I have a prayer that I like to say with them, with everybody, and you get to say it after me, and there's actions, so you get to watch me, okay? So let's all do it together. God be in my mind and in my thinking. Now you say it. God be in my mind and in my thinking. God be in my ears and in my listening. Now you say it. God be in my ears and in my listening. God be in my eyes and in my looking. Now you say it. God be in my eyes and in my looking. God be in my mouth and in my speaking. God be in my mouth and in my speaking. God be in my hands and in my serving. God be in my hands and in my serving. God be in my heart and in my loving. Be in my heart and in my loving. Amen. Okay, so I'm going to get you guys maybe to sit in the pew here so you can see what's going on. And when I need you and Kate, I'll call you to come up, okay? So at this time, we're going to be singing hymn number 443, God We Pray at This Beginning. And the family will come up during the second verse. And this time, the words are on the screen. Make our sons as wise as 
Please be seated. Where's I, I need to see you. Make a semicircle so I can come out. Ah, uh, there you are. Now I can see you. Yeah, don't block the godparents, Michael. They're important. So today in our worship service, we're surrounded by grace as we baptize this precious and beautiful child of God, and we remember. We celebrate and we give thanks for God's grace. Psalm 139 says God's grace surrounded Meadow even before she was born. And so this celebration of God's love and grace we call baptism. And the water that will be in the font shortly will be a visible sign of God's invisible grace. So the sacrament of baptism proclaims and celebrates the grace of God. By water and the spirit we are called claimed, and commissioned. So we are called God's own, given our identity as children of God. We are claimed by Christ, united with Christ, with each other, and with the Christian community of every time and place. And then we are commissioned, or sent out, to Christ's ministry of love, and peace, and justice, strengthened by the Holy Spirit for the work of Christ in the church and the world. Hold on a second. Just lost it. Do -de -do -de -do. There we go. Nope. Sorry, we had it and we've lost it again. We're looking for your words. It worked really well earlier. <laughs> so, since I can't find it and we didn't have it printed out, silly us. I have it on my phone. Well, that's okay. Just Hazel would normally be saying this, so tell us about Meadow. So just wing it. It's good stuff. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Hazel. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, so this is Meadow. She's nine months old. Uh, in a few days. Uh, she's the light of our lives. Um, everybody who meet her, meets her loves her. Um, she loves waving to everybody, her music class, swimming, and her family and people. Um, <laughs> you wanna say anything? Um, she's just very loved and uh, we're so thankful to be here today. Um, she's looked after by many angels, including her two uh, grandfathers. And then if everyone could just say um, a prayer, there's uh, someone very close to us who's no longer here who has actually had their funeral in this church. Her name was Rachel. And um, if you could say a prayer for her, that would be wonderful. So thank you. Thank you. Sorry about that, Hazel. Yes, so Rachel is the reason why she wanted to come back to have a uh, Meadow baptized, and she also, God bless her, wanted a woman minister to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, in the presence of this community of faith, we ask that you, Melissa and Mike, now state what you believe as you answer these vows that I'm going to ask you. Do you believe in God? as God has been revealed to us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I do by the grace of God. Desiring the freedom of new life in Christ, do you promise to resist evil and 
to seek to live in love and justice? And will you join with your brothers, sisters, and siblings in the mission and ministry of Christ's church? Will you raise Meadow in a Christian home, so fashioning your lives, your words, and actions, that she may come to know God's love through Jesus? Okay, and now the godparents, who happen to be the aunts, uh, I ask you this question, Alana and Jenna. There, we realize there are many persons who touch the lives of children, so do you as the godparents promise to fulfill to the best of your abilities the sacred task of godparenting Meadow, giving her your love, your time, sharing your faith, nurturing her as she grows in faith and love. If you're so willing, please answer, I do, God being my helper. Now it's your turn. Because as a congregation, you also have a responsibility, not just with Meadow, but with every child in this congregation. So I invite you to rise as you are able, and if you cannot stand, just rise in spirit. We hope that they will now know they are not alone in this ritual, for they, like all of us, are part of this faith community. So with that in mind, I ask you as a baptized and baptizing church, do you commit yourselves to support and nurture Melissa, Mike, Meadow, Alana, and Jenna at, within this community which worships God, loves and serves others, seeks justice, and resists evil? If you are so willing, please boldly answer. So did you hear that? You've got a lot of faith family right here who are here. Thank you. Oh, please remain standing or risen as we now say what we believe as found in a new creed of the United Church of Canada. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to love and stop it works in us and others by the Jews. We are constant God. We are called to lead the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live and respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Okay, Kate and your friend, can you can you get that? And together, you can. Come on over here. Come on over here. Okay, there you go. Kate, if you want it. So can you help her? And you're going to pour the water into the font. Excellent. So as they pour, gracious and holy God, we bless you for the gift of life and within it the gift of water. Over its unshaped promise, your spirit hovered at creation. By water comes the growth of the earth. Through water, you led the children of Israel into freedom. In the waters of the Jordan, your child Jesus was baptized. Now may your spirit be upon us in what we do, that this water may be a sign for all of new life in Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. All right, thank you. You may all be seated. Sorry about that. So, Meadow, will you come to me today? Mom and Dad are right there. They're not too far. Honest, they aren't. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Mom, Mom and Dad are right there. Can you hold that for me? And what is the name of your daughter, her whole name? Meadow, Meadow Selena Park Ferry. <gasps> you ready? I baptize you in the name of the Father, Whoa. in the name of the Son, One more, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. So if the four of you could come and place a hand on her gently, you can do her foot, whatever, however you can get through. And you too, you get to place a hand somewhere. Meadow, may 
O oh, oh God, uphold Meadow by your Holy Spirit. Give her the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you. Hi. And we have a couple of gifts for you. I'll step out of the way. Yeah. How cool is this? What happened? Oh, I got wet. They want to pass it to me. So, there's... Uh, follow the for the light of Christ follow uh, you give the candle first and if you can read that to show that in our baptism yep and now you give the the Bible okay but there's a uh, so next slide, please. Oh, no, I guess we did that on our own. You got the Bible. So I declare that Meadow has been received into the Holy Church of God, and we go for a little walk. So this is Meadow, and these are the people who have said, I think you know those ones, we don't care. <laughs> so let's take a look at these folk. Yeah, so these folk have said they're going to help, they're going to make sure, like, there's a Sunday school for you, and there's... They're going to pray for you and your family. So look, imagine all these people. Holy Toledo. That's a lot of folk. Look at them all. And look, they're waving at you. Because you like to wave, don't you? But apparently not today. No. But you are just the sweetest little girl. Yeah. And there's some other folk. Yeah, you know these people. And now you get to go back to Dad. There you go. Thank you very much. And you can be seated. All right, you guys can head off to Sunday school now. And I think, Allison, you're on for scripture. There you are. Boom, welcome. Our first scripture reading is taken from Acts chapter 1, verses 6 to 14. Let us listen for and hear the word of God. Then they gathered round him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. 
Our second scripture reading is taken from the book of John, chapter 17, verses 1 to 11. After Jesus said this, he looked toward heaven and prayed, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people, that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believe that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine, and glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, a name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. The word of Christ. Thank you, Allison, I appreciate that. Please pray with me. O oh God, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. So I know last weekend was a huge celebration with you folk. You had a big gala Saturday night. How did that go? Went well. And how was the anniversary service last Sunday? Excellent. I'm, I heard it was a little long. But then again, after 200 years, why not? And so I want to add my own congratulations to Trinity on achieving that milestone, 200 years of being a faith-filled community, of sharing the gospel of Jesus and living into the commandments that he shared. Remember those two commandments, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and then to love your neighbor as yourself. And that truly is pretty darned amazing. Uroma, um, you come from Germany. So a 200-year anniversary is pff, nothing with all the cathedrals that are like a 1,000 years old. But for us in Canada, 200 years is pretty darned amazing. So that's why we're all excited about it. <laughs> so you stayed on your website you are indeed making a difference together as we all experience God through connection, through worship, and action. And then you have that logo, and it defines who you are. Deep roots, but new growth. The past informs you, but it doesn't bind you. And I say all that to help us move into the scripture readings. Because in the two readings from Acts and John, we hear how the followers of Jesus were to live out their lives as a faith community. In the book of Acts, what we experience in this reading is the ascension of Jesus. Now, as United Church folk, we really don't look very much at the ascension, but there really is a very good message here for all of us. Jesus finally leaves and the disciples now are gobsmacked that they're alone but really they're not because they have one another and that's true here isn't it you have each other 
we are all the body of Christ filled with the very Spirit of God. And we are called to minister to each other through prayer, through exhortation or sharing, and through physical acts of service. So each week as you, you gather here to worship, you gather to pray, you gather to check in with each other. And each week there is lamp, lunch at my place. It's a weekly meal for the community, no matter who they are or where they're from. And you share what you have with the food bank. You support the children of this community with Sunday school. It's a place where they can come and learn and ask questions, knowing that they're welcomed and loved. And outside of the church, you support one another. Drives to medical appointments, a gentle touch, a phone call, maybe even the gift of a meal. And do you realize what happens when you do all of that? You are bearing Christ to one another. We love, live, and serve in Jesus' name as his physical body in this world. Jesus has been lifted from our sight, but yet we see him all the time in the manner in which we treat one another. Hmm. Jesus says that the disciples are going to be his witnesses in Jerusalem. As witnesses, they're to share what they've seen and what they've experienced. So you are a witness to the activity of Jesus Christ in your midst. When did you witness Jesus? Think about this past week. When did you witness Christ at work? At the gym? At home? At the grocery store? while playing pickleball, driving your car on the 400 as you got cut off, or on a walk? Did you witness Christ in your midst? I did this morning. I had a great welcome by Elizabeth, and then by Marion, and then by uh, Mel oh, Melanie? Melissa, oh, I, was, I was going, which one is it now? And Squirrel. What a great welcome. They greet you every week. They were Christ in that moment for me. Hazel has been Christ as she welcomed the Parg Ferry family as they came into church for Meadows fam baptism. I witnessed Christ at the checkout the other day when another customer let me let someone else, pardon me, into the line because that person was in a rush and they were so frazzled. So it doesn't really seem like a big deal. But for that moment, for that frazzled, upset person, Christ's hand was upon that shoulder, calming them, letting them know they were important and that all would be well. And so we make a difference when some, whenever we slow down, when we smile at someone, when we let things go, and when we forgive. In the gospel lesson, Jesus is offering his most urgent hopes for the disciples. And that's his prayer for them. But it's also his prayer for us. He prays that the disciples will receive everything he's received. The words God gave him, he's given now to them. And he prays on their behalf because they are God's. And he says, all mine are yours and yours are mine, so that I may be glorified in them. So again, we have that image of Christ within each of us. So when you look at someone else, do you see Christ? And when they look at you, do they see Christ? When we are frazzled, fed up, angry, that's when we need to see Christ in that individual the most and that they need to see Christ in us. I'm sure you're familiar of this story. It's been around for a long time about a woman who's driving down the road and she's honking the horn at the car in front of her because it's going too slow for her. 
And she's honking away, she's yelling at them, and she's giving them the um, Pierre Trudeau wave. Pick a finger, pick a finger. And she is so upset, but then all of a sudden she gets pulled over by the police, and the police officer says, I want to see your license and the ownership of your car because I don't believe this is yours. And she says, well, of course it's my car. Why wouldn't you think it is? Well, I could hear you beeping your car horn at the person in front of you. I could see you yelling at them. I could see you giving a uh, salute. And I figured the car had to be stolen because of the bumper stickers on your car. On her car, the bumper stickers were about being Christian and following God and loving your neighbor. Exactly. The officer could not see Christ in her at the moment, and I bet she couldn't even figure out where Christ was in that moment either. All that to say that we're called to pray for each other. Not just in passing, but in reality. Because prayer changes people. Prayer opens people to discover amazing things. When you are prayed for, either knowingly or unknowingly, something happens to you you all of a sudden realize you're not alone in this faith journey. So have you ever really prayed for someone? Prayer doesn't have to be fancy or filled with a lot of words. Just, oh, God bless whomever, and may they have a wonderful day, and may they know they're loved. Amen. That's it. Nothing too difficult. But let me tell you that when someone prays for you, it's a humbling experience. And it doesn't matter if they're standing right there in front of you or they're over in PEI in their kitchen. What matters is that they are praying for you. Now, if you have your bulletin handy, take a look at it. Somewhere in it is a prayer list. Can you find that prayer list? We only have the first names. Maybe you know a couple of the people and maybe you don't. But that doesn't even matter because God knows who that person is and that's all that matters. So I'm challenging you. When the offering is being taken up, take out that prayer list and start praying for those people, whether you know them or not. They need to know they're being prayed for. It's an awesome opportunity. As I said, maybe you don't know them. Doesn't matter. Pray for them anyway. Maybe... You're never going to meet them. Doesn't matter. Pray for them anyway. Maybe you do know one of them and you're actually pretty ticked at them at the moment. Doesn't matter. Pray for them anyway. Jesus prayed for each of us through his disciples. We're not perfect. (laughs) We've all made mistakes and guess what? We're going to make even more. And that doesn't matter. Jesus prays for us anyway. We are a community, a family. And what unites us is prayer, our love for Christ, and our commitment to serve God. So as you go out into the world, may you remember to be Christ one to another. Thanks be to God. And all God's children said, Amen. The hymn that I want us to sing fits in with being Christ in the world. It's called Christ Has No Body Now But Yours, and it's based on the words from St. Teresa of Avila, who lived, I believe, in the 1200s. So these are, this is an old prayer, but it's one we need to continue saying and singing. 171 in more voices. 171.
has no body now but yours, no hands but yours. Here on this earth, yours is the worth to serve with the joy of compassion. No eyes but yours to see as Christ would see. yours, no hands but yours, here on this earth, yours is the work to serve with the joy of compassion, no feet but yours to journey with the poor, to walk this world with mercy and joy. but yours, no hands but yours, here on this earth, yours is the work to serve with the joy of compassion. But yours, no hands but yours. Here on this earth, yours is the work to serve with the joy of compassion. Thank you. Please be seated. Powerful hymn. So we're coming to the offering time. Anybody have any idea what actually happens to your offerings after you make them? Well, you might not ever really know. But give anyway. After you ask God for guidance in making your gift, have faith that your gift is going to make an impact and then let go of your claim to it. So thank you on behalf of the finance team and the wider church for giving, for supporting the life and work of Trinity United and for the wider ministry of the United Church of Canada through the Mission and Service Fund. You do make a difference. So let us make a difference now with our offering in response to God's guidance in our lives. And don't forget, while the offering's being taken, pray for those on the prayer list. I have called you by your name, you are mine. I have gifted you and asked you now to shine. I will not abandon you. All my promises are true. You are gifted, called, and chosen. You are mine. I will help you learn my name as you go. Read it, written in my Jesus' body given long ago. I know you will need my 
touch as you go. Feel it pulsing in creation's ebb and flow. Like the woman reaching out, choosing faith in spite of doubt. Hold the hem of Jesus' robe, then let it go. I have given you a name, it is mine. I have given you my spirit as a sign. Life, my wonder in your soul, make my wounded children whole. Go and tell my precious people they are mine. They stand for our song. <clears throat> Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks. To the Holy One, give thanks because God's given Jesus Christ, God's Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart, give thanks to the Holy One, give thanks because God's given Jesus Christ, God's Son. And now let the weak say, I believe the prayer of dedication will be coming up on the screen for us, so let us say this together. Bless, Bless these, these gifts, gifts, O Lord, Lord of all, that we might worship you with great joy and serve your, your people with great love. In, in Christ's, Christ's name, name. Amen. amen. Thank you. Please be seated. For the prayers of the people, the main prayer that I'm using today is actually a litany for Mother's Day because it remembers those who are mothers, those who are not mothers, those who grieve a broken relationship with their mother, and so on. It was written by Reverend Rob McCoy with Two Rivers Methodist Church in Rock Island, Illinois around 2012, 2014. And I have used and adapted this litany prayer for years because I find it to be very profound and moving. So I pray that this prayer speaks with you to you as well. Please pray with me. As we gather here and worship this day, O oh God, we recognize that each one of us is a child of someone, and so we praise you for the women who have given us life. For mothers who are brave, strong, compassionate, full of wisdom and grace, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. For mothers vulnerable, worried, frustrated, and hurried, we pray for peace. For relationships that are strained and no longer a source of joy, we pray for healing. For mothers who have died that no longer live with us, but, but whose light shines on in our hearts and memories, we pray for those that mourn and we give you thanks for life eternal. For mothers who grieve, who have lost children born, or unborn, we weep with those with broken hearts and ask you to hold them in grace, peace, and strength. 
for those who are struggling to raise children who are tired and weary. We pray that we might be their village, offering real help in hard times. For those who are preparing emptier nests, help us to both celebrate and mourn with them, and we pray that their wings are as strong as their roots are deep. For stepmothers, navigating the pitfalls and the joys of creating a new family, we pray for wisdom and patience. For grandmothers who are doing the hard work of raising children once again, we pray for them as caregivers, and we ask that they also have those who care for them. For those who are waiting and sometimes struggling with the biological process to bring new life, and for those who are waiting for adoptive process to be fulfilled, may they know that we also wait eagerly with them, and may we offer our hand to hold them in the trial and as they rest in your grace while they wait. For women who do not have children, but instead teach, lead, care for, and guide the children of others, we give you great thanks and praise. For the mothers, sisters, daughters in our midst and around the world, for the women who created in your image give not just life, but abundant life, for women fighting, struggling, and sweating for the sake of others. For women caring, compassionate, and crying with the heart of Christ. For the caregivers, prophets, preachers, teachers, leaders, shepherds, healers. For moms in their wide variety and many forms, we give you thanks and praise. For all these prayers and the prayers for the people we know situations and places around the world that cause division, for those trapped in war, conflict, and hatred, for those struggling with various health issues, whether it be physical, mental, emotional, or relational. We place all of the people, places, and situations into your hands, O God, for we know you hear our prayers and answer in time. So now we join our voices and hearts as one as we say the prayer that unites us no matter which church we might attend or denomination we claim. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn is in Voices United, number 330, Jesus Shall Reign, number 330. I invite you all to stand if you're able. Jesus shall reign where the sun does its successive journeys run. His kingdom stretch from
blessing and sending forth. As people of faith, we have gathered for worship. As people of faith, we now return to the world. So go out to share the story of faith, the story of life, with the world around you. We share the faith in word and in deed, in speech and in action. And as you go out now to be that living witness, as you go out to testify God's love that is active in this world, may you go knowing that God goes with you. And may you share the laughter and the hope, the fears and the tears. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Jesus, name above all names, beautiful Savior, glorious hope, Emmanuel, God is with us, blessed Redeemer, living word. Savior, glorious hope, Emmanuel, God is with us, blessed Redeemer, living word, Jesus, name above all names, beautiful Savior. And there is a time of fellowship which is in the hall and if you're not familiar with the church go down the steps keep going and then go down more steps through the hall and you'll come to a big hall and that's where fill my cup is so hope to see you there I'm gonna hang out with the family to get a few photos but I'll see you over there have a cup of tea ready for me please <laughs> 